In today's lunch break, a local chef and participant of the chef competition show Guy's Grocery Games is here with a recipe that catapulted him to the next level in the quest to be the champion all-star chef. Kindlings, James Beard Award winning chef Jonathan Sawyer joins us now to make Lobster Benedict. So I love that it's called <laughs> Guy's Games, but we were talking in the break, this is anything but a game. Boy, it sure <laughs> is. I mean, you're halfway through a dish and then they change it or they add something or they take something away way or you you know it's just it's it's ultimately super fun and that's why it's such an entertaining and successful show because at home you're watching and you're biting your nails and you're like how are yeah. they going to adapt to this and that's how we end up with a lobster dish that has tapioca pudding oh my involved goodness. in it. Okay, so you were going, <laughs> you were going to make lobster Benedict. Yes. And then they said, mmm, add some tapioca. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, so there was, you know, in my brain as a classically trained, you know, French trained chef, mm -hmm. vanilla bean and lobster makes a lot of sense together. So the adapt, you know, the adapt that I, that I made there was like, okay, I'm going to take the sugar, I'm going to take the starch from this, I'm going to take the texture, and I'm going to incorporate it into an onion puree and then I'm gonna take some of this onion puree and I'm gonna incorporate it into my hollandaise and that's how my champagne brunch will be oh, transformed into right. a place where it not only you know uh, uh, makes sense because that's really for me that's how I I gotta you know I'm a nerd I gotta work through it first <laughs> and then I gotta cook it and taste it and touch it and then I played it and then I hope that I win as I did this week I know yeah we're still rooting for you <laughs> so excited so we started out with how many people we started out with ten people that ten. was four uh, four weeks ago and now down to four and now we're down to the final four and then there were four and then there will be three <laughs> and then two and then eventually and one. Then one. <laughs> and so we're every Wednesday night we're sort of watching the show live and we're really appreciating all of our hometown support and oh, yes. it's eight o'clock on Food Network. But we're also featuring some of the dishes from my challenges inside of the competition thus far. Oh nice. So this dish not only will you get to you'll get to try it before anybody else in Chicago. All right. But also our guests and customers at Kindling and the Willis Tower will get to try it. We'll it's the menu next week. Oh, that's wonderful. And you said it kind of, it really does make you a better chef because yeah. you think, okay, what if I really did run out of something in the kitchen? Right. And what else am I going to do? You can come up with some substitutions. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, one of my favorite quotes that Brilat Severon always said was, necessity and accident are the mother of invention, right? And the idea is like, yeah, sometimes my mom didn't have enough bread for three hungry boys. Right. And we figured out how to do it with cornflakes. Or sometimes you're given tapioca. Sure. And a dish like this sort of evolves out of it. And, and, you know, that's the beauty of a show like this, where the relatability isn't just like, hey, these are famous chefs on TV cooking cool stuff. It's like... Oh, in my fridge I have all those ingredients right now. Or I have right. I have some smoked whitefish instead of lobster, so that's how sort of my version of this champagne brunch will come around. And now tell us about some of the other challenges in, in case people haven't seen the show. Oh, yeah. Because the one you were telling me about with, with like going down the grocery aisles, because it well, looks like a grocery store. Yes. It's a market. It is, and ultimately because all of these competitors are supremely qualified. So all of us have done Tournament of Champions before, which is the top 32 chefs in America versus each other. So they really spun up these challenges for us versus each other. Typically we get two. Sometimes you have to use one ingredient from every aisle. Sometimes you have $20 and you can only shop in the freezer and the judges don't know, but it is supposed to be a seafood challenge. Oh, ooh. Yes, yes, exactly. Or sometimes you're not allowed to use your favorite aisle or sometimes they hand you fish sauce at the very end and you need to use it. So we were looking at some of the video. Yeah. In the end, how nerve wracking is it when they're kind of talking about your dish and going through and you're, you're waiting to hear, did I move on to the next level? You can tell from what my kids and my wife as they watch it call my normal eye when I'm like <laughs> eyeballs bugging out and I'm like praying. I'm literally praying I'm holding my cross and I'm like oh please Jesus and baby Jesus you know but ultimately you already did it and you're honored to be there you know there's yeah. thousands if not hundreds of thousands of chefs who would love to be in our shoes on that show representing Absolutely. their city and their restaurant in the way that we get to and you know some you win some you lose I just happen to be having the best competitive cooking year I've had in my 12 year chef right, uh, talk about what yes. you did here because you were putting all this together right. as professionally as you are talking away and yep. yet putting together a really gourmet dish so ultimately we're, we're we're doing a champagne brunch we're doing a luxurious dish the thing i love about eggs 
Benedict, right, specifically for brunch, is nothing is really going to be hot. Your, your poached egg is never going to be over 120 degrees. Your holiday is never going to be over 110 degrees. you got to toast your toast. So if you do all those things in advance, like I did, and you keep them all right. warm, it comes oh. together at the last second. And the beauty of, you know, I've been poaching eggs sort of slowly here. This is still hot, so I can still serve. I'm going to eat this one. Okay. You can eat that one. But the holidays, this is my favorite trick. And this oh. isn't necessarily the tech that you need to do at home. This is called an ISI whip or, or a whipped cream whipper. And I just put my holiday days in here, I charge it with nitrogen or CO2, and it stays warm and bound for up to three hours. But it becomes that consistency. Perfect. Yeah, look at that. I mean, just, we could just go right over top of it. Oh, my now, the goodness. Now, the other thing you can do is just take a coffee pot at home and put it in the coffee pot, put the lid on, uh -huh. exact same one, clean it out first, of right. course, yeah. and then it'll stay warm for hours in there. You won't have to do anything. It'll feel like you're making so you this dish a la minute. And really, you, you made that sauce long before they got here, and you can walk out and pretend like you've been sweating and then serve them a dish like this that they're like, wait, oh. that's 30 Dollars yeah, I just Luke whipped restaurant. that up, baby. Right. I want to show the plate in the front there because yeah. you took the lobster out and the presentation still looks like it's in the shell, but we yes. don't have to do the work. You know, you do a couple Valentine's Days or New Year's menus in a restaurant and you can yes. butcher a lobster just like this. Oh. Uh, but the idea is, you know, we're utilizing every single bit of it. I have the knuckles, I have the claws, I have the tails, I have the um, all of it sort of butchered out. And I'll save those shells and make a stock from that. But it all started over here with the humane kill and blanch of it. That's The knife is not only cool, but it's there for the idea that if we're going to use it, we're going to use it in a way that's humane to the animal, whether right. it's chicken, uh, sturgeon, or lobster. Um, and the other thing that i got to emphasize, too, and you'll, you'll never, it's much like pasta at home, almost, you almost never use the right size pot. The, you, you couldn't use too big of a pot for something like eggs benedict or oh, poaching eggs. Yeah, I never would have thought yeah. of a pot that big. So what you'll do is you'll, you'll start to stir it like this, mm -hmm. right? I mean, before that, we'll add a bunch of vinegar, almost a whole cup. We'll add a bunch of salt, you know, a couple tablespoons, and then we'll create that current. And from that current right in the center, we'll crack an egg. You can do these in advance at home and keep them in little pots. Yeah. We'll crack it there, and you'll see the edge of the egg will start to whip It'll around itself, and around. that's how you get that perfect restaurant egg. And the longer slash taller the egg is, it takes to get to the bottom, the better chance it has of congealing before it hits the bottom. All so, right, you just got the greatest tip. <laughs> <laughs> you can check out kindlingchicago.com for more information from the Willis Tower restaurant. And don't forget to catch Jonathan Advance on Guy's Grocery Games. That's on the Food Network channel. And and on our webpage, WGNTV.com slash midday, we'll have a link to that. Did you give us this recipe? I do have this recipe. With the tapioca? With the tapioca <laughs> and everything. Minnesota's right. finest.